All right. Our next speaker is Logan Olds, the general manager of the Victor Valley Wastewater Reclamation Authority. He's known for bringing humor and passion to the subject of wastewater. Join me as we welcome Mr. Logan Olds. I don't have a clicker. There's the clicker. Awesome. Will it buzz? Is it already buzzing? All right, good deal. Hey there. Okay, super excited as I always get because, of course, I think that there is nothing better than the capital S of sewage. So, we're going to talk about uh, how to get a career doing what I am fortunate enough to do each and every day. But I was also thinking after listening to Bryce's amazing and inspirational talk um, about really what's my belief system. I mean, why in the world would someone like me, who's nothing more than kind of a dorky odd person anyway, get so much enjoyment out of sewage and all that it has to offer? So I thought I'd share with you uh, some of my belief system because there are people in this room that I've known for a very long time but I actually don't think they, they know me. So, <clears throat> Bryce, this is all your fault. <laughs> so, uh, half of my family are uh, grade school teachers, the other half are blue collar tradespeople. And uh, if there was one thing I knew growing up, it was how to fix things, because if it broke and you don't have money, well, it stayed broke unless you know how to fix it. And then also, uh, all my family always made certain that I read. So, I've always been a big reader. Uh, but, you know, quite frankly, I did not have a clue what I wanted to do. So, all of you young people that are out there in the audience, you hear these folks that are up here saying what they wanted to do. I will tell you that I had no idea. All I knew was I liked things that were out in the environment. So whether it was rocks or plants or whether it was the animals that were out there, but something in the environment. So I uh, uh, went to school and had a very interesting experience because didn't have much money. So when you believe that you really want to do something, you will figure out a way to make it happen. I ended up living in an old grain silo. Had no hot running water. Matter of fact, it had no water. There was no restroom, there was no shower, there was nothing like that. So I had to build some of those own things, um, but fortunately I knew how to do that. But it was the only way that I could persevere and continue to educate myself because I knew that I wanted to do something that was meaningful. Not just for me, but it would be meaningful for the people that I could eventually help. Still had no clue what it was going to be. So I'm going through school, taking classes, um, making mistakes like everyone does, because when you're young, that's part of what you're supposed to do, is make mistakes. And uh, guess what? Here I am, almost 50. I still make a lot of mistakes, but it's just part of life. You learn and you grow from those. Uh, eventually, I learned about sewage. And let me tell you, it was love at first sight. <laughs> Absolute love at first sight, because guess what? What I get to do is what I grew up doing. You get to read about things, you get to uh, work with tools, and I'm gonna show you what some of those jobs are, are about. But the, the one great thing about what we get to do each and every day, and I'm asked this all the time, Logan, why didn't you go into the potable water side? Well, about 15 years ago, I had that choice. I had advanced to the point where I could go one way or I could go the other. And what I decided was I really liked the biology of wastewater treatment. And uh, to me, that is why I'm here before you, is because I enjoyed those, those aspects of the organisms. So can any of you name something that you can do or build that doesn't involve water? Did I hear Legos? Listen, it takes water to make those Legos, and I've got a lot of Legos at home. Matter of fact, my godchildren, that's what I get them, Legos. 
No, you can't name a single thing because water is critical to absolutely everything around us. Just look around you. The water that was used to make the materials on this stage, the water that was used in the brains for the people that uh, made these presentations, water is absolutely every single place around you. It took water to create it, to be it, to do it. And you are using water just to be here, right? Sitting here. So water is the one universal aspect of everything. It is all around us. Is there any such thing as new water? There's no such thing as new water because she stole my line about dinosaurs, but that's all right. So water has always been here. It will always be here. And I feel very blessed and fortunate that my staff and I are given the opportunity to take what you flush every day, fix it, clean it up, and send it right back to you. Yep. Okay, so um, where is, uh, where's a really fancy place? Orange County, right? So a lot of fancy communities up there. Guess whose sewage Orange County drinks? San Bernardino, Colton, Fontana, all of those communities. As a matter of fact, Orange County actually owns land in San Bernardino to ensure that that flow of treated effluent from those wastewater facilities continues to come to Orange County. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about how you can get a job. Oh my goodness. So this is home away from home. If you look in the, your upper left-hand corner there, that's uh, where I get to spend a lot of my day. And you can see a number of staff uh, there behind me, but David, you told me I could see this, but I'm too blind, I can't actually see that. We've got about 30 some odd employees. We treat 10 and a half million gallons per day of uh, wastewater. For you water people, that's about three acre feet. An acre foot is what should supply about two and a half families a year, about three families a year, is that about right? See, yeah, okay. Tom's giving me, you're good enough for now, but I'll correct you later, that look. Uh, we provide wastewater treatment for Apple Valley, Hesperia, Spring Valley, Lake, um, Oro Grande. And uh, do you know which one of those communities sends us the, be the best wastewater? You want to compete? <laughs> all right. It's all the same. Sorry. <laughs> it's all the same. None of you are any better than the other. One of the cool things, uh, we are the single largest piece of public infrastructure located in the high desert. So what does that mean? Guess how much that treatment plant in that corner up there is worth? Except for the people on my board who are in the employees. Okay, I can't hear you up here. One million. Oh my gosh, you are so wrong. <laughs> so wrong. One million dollars, oh my gosh. Listen, I'll tell you, I can't turn around without spending $100,000 on something. My board complains about that. Logan, don't you have anything that costs less than 100,000? Toilet paper. <laughs> All right, we got one million, I hear one million. Who wants to say 10 million? Show me by a raise of hand, 10 million. 16, who wants to go higher? How about 100 million? 100 million. Who says 200 million? How many people say 200 million? Okay, who wants to say 300 million? 300 million dollars. All right, now you're just screwing with me. That's not why we're here. There is over 300 million dollars invested in our infrastructure. 300 million dollars to take what you flush down the toilet reuse it, repurpose it, and re-release it back into the environment so that you all can drink it again. $300 million. So do you think this is something that we're just casual about? Absolutely not. One of the fun facts is that uh, if I don't follow the state and federal rules, I can actually go to jail for a very long time. Anyway, fun fact, woohoo. <laughs> Okay, our primary job each and every day is to protect public health. 
So we want to make certain that things like typhoid and all of those other bad, nasty diseases are not transmitted from one person to another by fecal and urine contamination. Okay, we're in a church. Can I say fecal? That's a, I can't say that word because I know I was given a list of, okay, don't say this. You're in, you're in a church. I'm like, okay. All right. So we can say, can I say poo? Because that's easier for me. It's, I'm getting the thumbs up. Okay. All right. I can say poo, so that means I can say pee, the important ones. So what we want to do is make certain that we're protecting public health by taking those waste products from you and the version of poo and pee remove the bad elements and then be able to put it back into the environment. That's what we do each and every day. So I was very pleased to hear that you want to pursue environmental engineering. Awesome. I chose the natural resources and sciences side rather than the engineering. I thought it was kind of boring, just the math size. How big am I going to make this basin? I wanted to know what was going on inside the basin. That's kind of the difference between the sciences and the engineering. I would have been a lot wealthier had I chosen your side, but <laughs> anyway. All right, uh, protecting public health. Okay, that's not me. Oh, but I have got some stories I could tell you. Oh my gosh, let me tell you, if you work in the wastewater industry, you will come away with some amazing stories. But again, we're in a chapel, so I probably can't tell those stories. Right? Okay. Can't tell those stories. Uh, also, be glad that you're in the United States because this picture is actually not that old. In many of the developing nations around the world, they will actually send people um, in nothing more than loincloths to go in, swim through the material, the muck, the poo, the pee, all of that stuff, to try and clear blockages. So, uh, I feel very unfortunate. That I feel very fortunate to be here and uh, to have the tools and resources that we do, but that's not what we do. This is uh, Johnny. Uh, Johnny is a local high desert uh, resident. Do you, do you all know Johnny? You're clapping like, oh, sweet, okay. Johnny is awesome, okay? He does a really good job for us. And actually, he was one of my students, Construction Technology and Public Works at VVC um, Operations. Really good guy. So what we try and do here locally is we want to train you, how can you get a job? If you don't like sewage, okay, you're not as cool as the rest of us, but it's okay. If you want to go into water, we can teach you how to get into that industry as, as well on the potable water side. Okay, we got Johnny, we got Latif. Latif comes to us all the way from Morocco, right? Amazing person, extremely intelligent. Uh, he started off at um, an entry level position, is now a manager um, at our agency. He's done a great job for us. And finally, Sal. Does anyone know Sal? Okay, so Johnny's just the popular one. He is pretty cool. Yeah, I'll admit. Yeah. All right. Uh, in California, over 6,000 licensed operators. So what does that mean to be a licensed operator? Basically, in order to do what we do, if you're interested in operations, you need to get a license. Um, there's an internship program, both on the water and on the wastewater side. So this is how you can go about getting an introduction into the career field. And uh, there are home study courses through CSU Sacramento. If you are interested, uh, just get a hold of me. We have our table that's out there. And I will personally help you through every single step of the process because I want you to enjoy sewage treatment as much as, well, you may never enjoy it as much as I do. But if you get even like 20% there, that would be sweet. All right, um, over 100 public agencies responsible for wastewater treatment. Um, that's actually wrong. There are over 10,000 agencies nationwide. There are over 1,000 agencies just in California. But the cool thing is, is there's this thing called, um, what's it called? I was hoping it would come to me, but the brain is, as we like to say, having a brain fart. Like, can I say that in here? Okay. Well, whatever it's called, it means that you get a license here, you can go to another state, and they'll accept reciprocity. There we go, reciprocity. So anyway, um, matter of fact, one time I actually applied for a job and they interviewed me. Five minutes, come on, you just can't do it. 
uh, for Antarctica, right, to run the wastewater treatment plant there. That would have been something else, Antarctica. Plus, where are you going to spend it? Oh, I'd like another snow cone? Mm. <laughs> Not happening. Uh, the silver tsunami, uh, let's see, what does that say? 31% of uh, wastewater workers set to retire in the next 10 years. Uh, where it's, the numbers, depending on where you are, if you're looking at operators, that number is actually closer to 70%, but overall in our industry, over 30% of the workforce is retiring, so there's a lot of opportunities that are there. All right, so we talked about um, plant operators. You get to do all sorts of neat things. That um, thing that says pillar is a high-speed turbo blower. That's actually a $300,000 box that has a jet engine inside of it. I kid you not, this is a jet engine that serves no purpose but to take the oxygen we're, we're breathing and to take it to what we call the mixed liquor, which is all the microorganisms that you get to play with. Yes, you would get to play with them. And uh, keep them alive and doing the things that they like to do. Uh, we also have electrical and instrumentation, and that picture on the far left was on a night that I was puckered more than I've been in 20 some odd years in this industry. We actually had a complete power failure at our facility. No power, no backup power, no nothing. And guess what? Nick was still flushing his toilet. See, we're in one of those industries where it's 365 to 24-7. I can't go to you all and say, oh, listen, we're having a problem. Um, I need you to stop flushing your toilet. You can't take showers. Um, by the way, um, no using your sink, dishwashers. Well, if you need to use uh, the toilet, just go outside and find a bush. <laughs> right? Doesn't work in our industry. So uh, electrical and instrumentation technicians are critically important to what we do. Environmental compliance, uh, these guys are out in the field, so they make certain that the waste that's being sent to us meets certain conditions, make certain that no one's dumping gasoline down the drain. Oh, and by the way, by the way, you know, I think this is probably the young males, not the young ladies that are in this room. But if you guys ever ruin my Thanksgiving by putting another 60-gallon water heater down our collection system, I would love to find you and, in, and um, introduce you to the headworks without your shoes. Okay, the only things that should go in our collection system is poo, pee, and toilet paper. There is no such thing as flushable wipes, tires do not belong, water heaters do not belong, big rocks do not belong, poo, pee, and toilet paper. Otherwise, you create problems. These are the guys that take care of that. And yes, I've spent um, Thanksgiving and Christmas um, removing things like tires and water heaters. Um, I don't understand what... <laughs> mechanical technicians, these guys fix everything. So if you are mechanically inclined, it doesn't matter whether it's welding, pipe fitting, plumbing, again, electrical, you name it, we need it at the facility. If you got $300 million worth of infrastructure to maintain, I guarantee you need that. Utility workers, these are the jack of all trades. So if you've ever heard that phrase, jack and jill of all trades, we use those skills as well. Absolutely critical. By the way, all of you that are young ladies that are in the room, um, typically your skill set is better than all the young men in the room. You tend to think uh, down the line a bit better, whereas men just generally tend to think, oh, ugh. Maybe I shouldn't do that. Whereas the woman would go, why are you so stupid that you're hitting your head on the speaker? So, women, I invite you to join our industry. There aren't enough of you. would love to have more of you. Laboratory technicians, very technical skill set. If you are analytical and you want to earn six figures, this is a very good field to go into because this is where we do all of the testing to make certain that we don't violate our state and federal permits. Uh, this is uh, very technical. On the environmental resources side, watershed side, water quality scientists, right? So you got the water issues that are out there, and I'm sure I'm out of time. Engineering, right? Environmental engineers, this is um, Alton. I'm sorry, he and I tend to think alike. I'm not sure which one of us is more damaged by that. Collection systems, these guys are out in the field um, making certain that the pipes that collect sewage from this facility make it all the way to our treatment plant. There's all the administrative side, finance, uh, 
All of those things, just not enough time. Information technology. If you're interested in the computer sciences, supervisory control, and data acquisition systems, we have invested millions and millions of dollars into computer systems. Top reasons, there they all are. If you have any questions, see me afterwards. Thank you.